peanut butter and jelly. Mmm, delicious. Did you know that Americans eat an estimate average of 3,000 peanut butter and jelly sandwiches in their lifetime? But why? Well, it's because of its simplicity and its ability to comfort you for breakfast, lunch, or even dinner. It's literally creamy peanut butter and sweet jelly smashed in between two slices of white bread. Three ingredients, but of course, you can't consume it every day. Let's be real, you'll die of diabetes type 3, which I call death. So instead, I made it a keyboard. Yep, that's right. I made a peanut butter and jelly keyboard. Hi, welcome to Nooses Club, a channel filled with random videos and shenanigans. In this video, I turned one of my favorite sandwiches into a keyboard. And don't take it literally. I will be building the CIY Gas 67, essentially a KBD 67 Lite, but an extra budget edition. It goes for 55 USD on Keeb Monkey. Unfortunately, the unboxing experience wasn't very pleasant. It quite literally turned up at my house demented. But I can't complain too much, considering I did buy mine off AliExpress. Upon opening the box, you are greeted with stabilizer housings, the wires, and a tight plastic container. It is then followed up by a braided coiled USB-C cable, poron gasket strips, case legs, stabilizer pads, screws, and other accessories like the screwdriver, keycap, and switch puller. Onto the case. It is an ABS injected molded case with a polycarbonate plate that is gasket mounted very similar to the KBD67 Lite, which I personally haven't tried. Of course, it comes with a PE sheet and silicone dampener. The PCB is a 5-pin hot swap keyboard with north-facing LEDs, meaning no cherry profile keycaps for us. For this build, I will be trying out the Acco Jelly Blacks from their CS family. They go for $12 for 45 pieces, so I bought two for around 25 USD. Out of the box, they feel very good, with a very acceptable amount of stem wobble. For a 3-pin switch, it feels very smooth, without really needing to lube them. But of course, I lubed them anyway. I lubed them off camera with Crytox 205 grade 0, and bag lubed the springs with Crytox 105. As for the keycaps, I'll be using some yellow SA high profile keycaps that I bought from Custom Keycaps UK, that are going for around 20 USD. Unfortunately, they were the only yellow keycaps that I liked that were SE profile. I then built the keyboard as is, starting with sticking the gaskets onto the plate. The reason for this is I will be spray painting the case after doing a stock test. I also left the stabilizers stuck, dry, and rattly, stuck on the stab pads, and tried to stick the PE sheet on. But then I realized there was no clearance since the stab wires were in the way. So I used a pair of scissors to cut the PE sheet so then I can mount it onto the PCB. I followed up by placing the silicone dampener and then connecting the daughter board to the main PCB. I mounted the keyboard, put on the top case and screwed it shut. Finally, sticking in the jelly blacks and testing the keyboard before finally placing the keycaps for testing. Here is the stock sound test. I was disgusted by the stabilizers. They rattled harder than a rattlesnake. The keyboard was quite clacky, even with the SA profile keycaps, and that was probably due to the silicone dampener. But anyway, I got up excited to mod it, and I did it with a coin mod, tape mod, adding some dampening case foam, removing the silicone dampener for more plate bounce and thock, and finally spray painted it with that creamy peanut butter. And it turned out crap. I messed up the paint job. <laughs> it was super hard to get the case back on and I had to redo the paint job the next day just so I can film some B-roll for my TikTok. 
Regardless with all the mods done, this keyboard turned out great, just as I thought. A creamy, thocky, peanut butter and jelly keyboard. I, I will say that I did enjoy building this keyboard right here. It's awesome, man. It's a great keyboard um, for literally like 110 USD. By the way, uh, the prices are all um, uh, without shipping. So if I were to put shipping, I'm based in New Zealand. I did have to pay like a good hefty $100 of just straight shipping. If I were to tell you the total price including shipping for this keyboard, this costed me roughly 250 to 300 NZD, which is equivalent to around 200. I don't know. Um, I'll have a picture up here to show you how much it would be. Probably like 120, 130 USD. I have no idea. I'm sorry. It's really hard to get into the niche, especially if you're in a country like mine, um, where quite literally importing things here is just the most stupid pricey thing you can do uh, but anyway uh, this build turned out great it's a nice brown color like peanut butter the only issues I do have with the keyboard now is that uh, the space bar is quite mushy I will say that the other modifiers are very nice and smooth these other keys are very smooth as well and the mods that we've done to it adding all those pennies and uh, 10 cent coins definitely beef this guy up a bit. As much as I want to fix that space bar, I painted the hell out of the inside as well, meaning it was just difficult to put in and difficult to pull out. And when I did pull it out for the second coat of paint, it, it like really scuffed it up. So I had to sand it down real good. So I don't think I'll be taking this keyboard apart anymore. Um, but other than that, uh, it's been a great first keyboard build. It's been a great first video. Of course, if you do end up watching my videos, I also stream on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash nooses club. Uh, over there, we just like to play games. I did make one stream, uh, which was literally the modification of my um, Keychron K3 in my toolbox, but. To just fucking go away with. Oh. Oh. Jesus. What the fuck? Ha! <laughs> Here's for the new screw that you fucked up. Ha! <laughs> 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 oh god. He, <laughs> he donated a dollar so I could buy a new fucking screw. Um, of course, I put some videos up on TikTok or, and on YouTube Shorts of me modifying some other keyboards like the ones behind me, like the Razer Huntsman Mini. Um, 
the uh, the Logitech G810, uh, the one that I literally found in the trash. Well, I didn't find it in the trash. I actually found it at work um, and they weren't using it and it was just dusty as hell and they let me take it home. So yeah, I modified that. I also have reviews on the Cherry 3.0 S. and the, um, the ACO 3098B. I do have some more keyboards to come. Um, other than that, this video has been great. It's been awesome just, you know, making this video. Um, and yeah, uh, if I'm officially broke just because of the stupid addiction that I have, but you know what, as long as I'm happy, right? As long as I'm happy. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that first video from me. Um, I'm looking forward to making more and hopefully I've entertained you guys. Anyway, I will see you in the next video. Peace.